Con cuanta despoto me llevo a ser un bon y a discarme de una vez Vaya que imaginación que tiene la chamaquita y ese flote So, building apps can be both difficult and time consuming For instance, this app over here, Arbster, which is an arborist job planning app I built in around 5 months between August of 2022 and March of 2023. This other app that I've built called Venture Pals, which I have a sticker for there and that we're about to sit and have a morning meeting for now, I built around four months between November of 2023 and March of 2024. I think it's uh, like you all said better if I give you a quick little demo of what the, how the product works and then we can talk about how it will be applicable like so. And I have some standard integrations I can add to my calendar, I can delete it, etc. I can leave a comment. But where this is applicable and where we've had a lot of interest and onboarded some incubators is that we have an option to enter an organization code. So first, first of all, something from experience that makes it a lot easier is to have a good co-founder. One thing, yeah, you can do it by yourself, but to distribute this app, to get the ideas, to have someone to bounce ideas off, it's much easier if you have a good co-founder. I've noticed this from building my own apps. One, it's less easy to be accountable, but it also it's less easy to test it because you gotta test it yourself, you already know how it works and the people who you reach out to for beta testing, they're usually not that dedicated but if you have a co-founder or someone who's got some skin in the game they're much more likely to give you honest feedback, real feedback and help you develop that product into something good. Speaking of which, we're now gonna speak to my co-founder, Joel, who's in the Netherlands. What's poppin? Yo! How are you? I was just telling YouTube about uh, the importance of having a co-founder. Oh yeah, same. Yes, yeah. sir. So you got you got some cred there. Another thing which you will need to consider when building an app is that you will need to put in some hours. It doesn't necessarily we need to be years or many many months, but in that short time period you will be able to, or you will need to be able to put in some hours, spending time coding, building this app. For instance, let me show you what I did during February of this year. What you just saw was me draw up the number of GitHub commits that I had done during February and March of 2024 when we were just about to release Venture Pals. As you can see, it wasn't massive. It was pretty big though. It's pretty consistent. For two months, almost every day or every other day at the very least, I made some code, I did some stuff for Venture Pals and I uploaded it to GitHub. Now, I probably coded more than this because you don't commit every time you code, or at least I don't do. Maybe that's how you should do it. Please correct me if that's how you should do it. Uh, but as you can see, I was quite committed and I spent quite some time uh, doing coding. So you should be able to, or you should be prepared to at least, dedicate a certain amount of time to coding. So this is not a video which is like how to quick fix, uh, get this coding done, how to quick fix, uh, get an app done in five minutes or, no, this is more of how you can speed up your development process and use some cool tools in order to be able to build an app as fast as possible. That doesn't mean you can take shortcuts, That doesn't, or that doesn't mean you can take massive shortcuts, that doesn't mean you will learn how to code in this amount of time, and that doesn't mean that you will be able to uh, just entirely skip out on certain steps of this process. But now it's seven o'clock at the office. We're gonna head home. I've been, but quick day for YouTube, but uh, a long day for me. I've been here for like 11 hours now. So we're gonna go home. We're gonna finish up this. We're gonna do some work on Rumi and we're gonna bake some bread. Let's do it. Now, next point, don't be so goddamn scared. Things can go significantly less wrong than you think. Just fuck up, like me making bread, for example. Ah, look at that. The strength of a lot of startups and a lot of companies is that they're able to innovate fast and they're able to do, change things and move things quickly along. So if you have an idea for a solution to a problem, just try it. You can always switch back later if you're using Git management, for example, and don't stress it so much. I've used this a lot for my past couple of apps. So if I look back now in my version history for my first app, Wonder Sagas, I had four versions before I launched it to App Store. For Arbser, my second own fully my own app, I had 18 versions before I launched it to App Store. For Venture Pals, the latest one, we had 47 versions before we launched it to App Store. So you take something, you iterate a little bit on it, you test it. You take something, iterate a little bit on it, you test it. And you do that on a weekly or even bi- or like a multiple times a week basis 
and you'll get to a good product much quicker than if you build all the features, release something, then realize you need to change something. So the less, the more changes you can make throughout the period, and the less you have to change in bulk, the faster your development cycle will be. Okay, now this was some general advice if you're building apps, products, tech software, even if you're just building general products. But now let's dive into a little bit more specifics on how you can implement this in software and some concrete tips on how to build software more quickly than if you don't implement these tips. Let's sit down at the desk. Okay, so now we're here in the home office and I thought I'd give you some actionable advice on how to actually approach this from a developing perspective. You can kind of apply this to physical products too, but now we're focusing on software and coding in particular. I know I'm in Sweden, it's bright as hell, it's actually, what, 720 outside? So this is what it's like living in the Nordics. Uh, but here we have a product called Rumi, which is what I'm working on right now. It's a, a little bit of a platform for school. It's not going to go into too much details as it's not my app, but it's a very cool idea and I'm super stoked to be working on this. So currently, uh, one thing which you can do or which one thing which you need to do when developing something like this is you need to base it on a UI model. So for example, here we have one for Rumi, here we have some of the other things that I've worked on, etc. But when I build Venture Pals, for example, which was the app that I talked about today, we have this now for the future iterations that my uh, girlfriend has actually made. She's a great UX designer. If you need to hire one, then hit her up for sure. Uh, but this is something that you can build out of. So the first app I built per actually looked pretty bad because I didn't really have a UI model. I had a UI UX design like a wireframe, but it didn't really have a, uh, a UI breakdown of it. So the colors are a little bit, little bit off, the shapes are a little bit off, and that just makes it so much worse because you need to go back later then to work on these types of uh, problems that these do not look the same here and they do not look the same there and they etc etc so definitely base this on a ux and ui design and the ux part is particularly important because that actually actually includes the flow as well so you need to make sure that you have a good flow of the app that it flows naturally that everything's intuitive and when you sit down and consider only this it becomes so much easier to uh, to do this just because you have the overview and you have that mindset but when you're coding it's a lot easier to skip this and just continue going for uh, writing functional code Number two, this is also something that I didn't do in the in the beginning. Use a task management program. Here I'm using Trello, you can use Jira, you can use uh, Monday.com, whatever floats your boat. But I'm using Trello now for Venture Pals. And this is where you can keep track of all the things which you've done. You can put things in the backlog. You can, now we're gonna start a new sprint this week. So we're gonna be removing, we're gonna be moving stuff over to to-do, for example, just so that you can keep track of all of these things. And this is gonna help you tremendously uh, both short term and long term because one you'll be able to see okay how are I prioritized before and how can I take this into consideration when making new features but also it's going to help you keep track of all the things which you need to do so you will then according to what I talked about earlier you will iterate you will release you will test and then you put it in the backlog then you come back and you look at all these things in the backlog and you prioritize and you will drag them to that to do for example then next up is database design this is something which you need to do before you develop your product and if you don't do this properly this can actually ruin your whole project so make sure that you set up your tables for example if you're using sql or if you're using firebase this principle is the same make sure you set it up in a way that all of the assets which have access to each other do have access to each other so for example in this apps case that i have on the screen here it will be that all of your classes have tasks within them and within those tasks there are particular events that they're connected to and that all of these different tables are connected to each other in certain ways so that you can uh, so that you can uh, get them from each other so for example uh, the orders table will have both a customer id and an employee id and a product id in this example that we have here meaning that you can fetch orders both from products from customers and from employees uh, regardless of which direction you go in so how that becomes applicable for example in the app that i'm building here is that one person may have some events that are connected to pre-k and some which are connected to kindergarten how can i fetch then all of my tasks for example from uh, both kindergarten and from uh, pre-k for instance so that's something which you really need to consider and if you don't do this properly this can really slow down your app in the future and it can also just lead to uh, messy querying and you having to redo this later. So if you want a fast development cycle, make sure you do this from the beginning. Now, one thing which is cool these days is that we have a lot of these uh, cool AI features. So I've found so far that ChatGPT 4.0 is not super great for uh, coding new stuff, but what it's great at is breaking down code and explaining it to you. So if I paste this and I say explain this to me, 
it will break down my whole uh, function here and it will explain uh, what's working, what's how it's working, etc. And then what it's very good at is inferring how this is meant to work. And obviously, since this is based on a lot of data that's available in regards to Flutter code, and I imagine this works for other code too, uh, it can really help you break down some issues. So one issue that I'm currently working on now is that for when I select these things, I query this fine, but when I make it class specific, that doesn't really work for pre-k. For some reason, when I try to query the pre-k classes, I get only the kindergarten uh, tasks. And this is something that I need to do. So I can describe this. Uh, I am having slash in load for the second option in the list builder. And now I'm spelling horribly. Any ideas why? And then you can use these functions to instead of by yourself looking through the code, testing, you know, printing there, debugging there, you can see if you can start off by doing this. And I've found that in like eight out of 10 cases, you're able to solve the problems like this. And then you can move on to more traditional methods of solving bugs. But so for example, then it will even write new code for you. So here it's saying you can do redo the fetch tasks method, for example, you can do that, or you can handle new events method, for instance. So that's one thing that it's very good at. Another way is that if you have code that you've already written, so for example, here I have user contact menu and I can use, uh, 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 I can select that part. And instead of redoing this whole thing, I can say, uh, so add two options to this that is make admin and remove user it should also take option is admin as so instead of having to implement all of that myself i can take the code that i've already written and i can send this to ChatGPT, and it will then rewrite the code based on this without me having to go into the details so I can just get the code from this, which is most of the time very, very good. And I can just copy paste it, test it in my apps. It works great. Let's move on. So those are three very concrete ways which you can speed up the, the development process. And this is all things which I've gotten much better at. And now that I'm doing apps on a more serious level, making sure that my clients are doing it at a, a much higher level as well. So you need a good UI, UX design on the entire app, or if now this is only new features that we're making. And but from the beginning, we did have a UX design as well. And you need to have the database design considered and you need to have a good task tracking system for the development cycle. Then make sure to use tools like these, tools like ChatGPT, for example. Tools like if you're doing Flutter, you're making sure that you're using packages of stuff that exist already so that you don't you know, really need to rebuild or reinvent the wheel, for example. Maybe badges, we need to create a badge like this, for example. Add to cart, remove from cart. There's a package for this. Instead of me having to rewrite this whole thing, let's make sure that I use these cool features that already exist and implement those in my app instead of reinventing the wheel myself. So those are some, some of the things which I make sure to implement in order to uh, speed up my development cycles and how you can too in order to build apps in weeks or months instead of years as a solopreneur, as a duopreneur, etc. But now let's continue with the rest of the evening which involves me actually solving some of these bugs using some of these methods. Okay, it's a couple of hours later. I'm quite tired. It's one o'clock in the evening and I'm waking up at six tomorrow. It is what it is. I've got to do better for myself. It's not good in the long term. Sleep, like you can grind all day, but sleep is one of the things that you got to get. On a more positive note, I have made some improvements. So now we have a pretty nice looking app here that's ready for an alpha version submission. So this now works. We built this feature today where you can filter on this month, this week, this whole class filter works uh, for particular tasks. So that's very nice. And uh, maybe we'll need to change some things up here. Before, for example, now it's viewing all the tasks in the month. Maybe we should have just the ones that are uh, due in, in the future potentially yeah well we'll see what kind of logic they want to implement and the event features works as well you can see the tasks there you can go to the event view you can manage your classes 
So quite nice, very good uh, and good progress. Uh, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that you uh, found some valuable advice in what I talked about when I, yeah, the whole segment about building a startup as fast as possible. Uh, if you like this type of content, then feel free to subscribe down below. It's completely free of charge and leave a like and a comment what you want to see in the future. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.